Amazing. May Allah make it easy for you. Number one. Number two is, in anyone's situation, and you know your situation, it's, it's, it's quite simple for me to say, you know what, just quit your job and go and get something else. But there's no jobs out there. I need to survive and so on. So what do I do? What really, what do I do? I have found a few, fa a few things. Number one is regarding the diet, you know what's halal and what you can eat and what you can't eat. Sometimes you, if you say this is halal, then people might be a little bit hostile towards the term. But if you use another word within which there is more halal than something there, they are more receptive of it, like I'm vegan or I'm vegetarian. It's, it's different. I'll give you an example. We were on a flight one day. And there was a beauty pageant that had happened in the country and myself and a few of the sheikhs were sitting in the front of the flight. And these girls walked in semi, you know, dressed. And uh, we were just talking to each other. And a little while later, uh, one of them developed the courage to come up to us and say, we'd like to take a picture. Now, we were the only guys with these big beards, you know. So the rest of the men on the flight, it was quite a big plane. The rest of the men on the flight, I don't know what made them pick us out from everybody else. So immediately, a colleague of mine, a friend of mine says, you know what? My wife will kill me. My wife will what? Will kill me. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. It's fine, don't worry. It, it, that's why we understand. And she went away. Wow. I was busy thinking about using the religious card and telling him haram, I'm a Muslim, you know, in Islam it's not allowed, what, what, what. He just showed me, listen, you can say something that they can receive with far greater ease. Uh, by the way, my wife is sitting right in your midst this evening, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, it's a good thing. I just said, you know what, my wife would be so unhappy, it's going to create a problem for me at home, you know. They would say, okay, fine, thank you. What, you achieved something you wanted to achieve without saying why you wanted to achieve it. But that is also true. So many times my wife tells me, you see this, you shouldn't have done this, you see that. She's the only one qualified to actually tell that to me. You know, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done this. And sometimes it's basic things and I'm like, okay, okay, fine, that's fine. Mashallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> but it's okay, alhamdulillah. So in your case, perhaps regarding the diet part of it, you can you can look for a worldly thing that's palatable to them, to, literally to use an, as an excuse, but it's acceptable because here comes a person saying, I'm vegetarian. They facilitate it for that person. The minute you say, I only eat halal, at times you can sense the vibe based on, depending on where you're working. You're working in an environment, like you say, that's very, very, you know, not connected to Muslims. Secondly, my sister, carry yourself in a way that you know you've done better or the best you could do given the circumstance. And pray to Allah to make it easier and ask Allah to give you an opening with a better job where you wouldn't have to trample on toes or eggshells. And Allah will grant you that open. So these are some of the steps that I would advise to say, do your best given your circumstances. I met a sister who's an air hostess in an air, on an aircraft. And she tells me, what do I do? Well, when you applied for the job, I wasn't involved. Number one. Number two is, now that you're in it, I can't tell you, quit it. Unless you have an alternative. If you have an alternative, please quit it. Because there's an alternative. But if not, and this is your means of survival, and this is the way that you are, go you know, it basically you know we need to pay rent. Nobody's going to come up in the masjid and say, right guys, everybody who's got a job where there's a little bit of haram, come here and collect 5,000 quid from us every month and that's it. It doesn't happen. It's never going to happen. It's a fairy tale. So those people who say, no, do this, don't worry. Allah will provide, Allah will provide. It's true. Allah definitely will provide. But... Allah has given you common logic. When you, I give you a true story, a very true story. A brother in America, this was very recent. A brother told me that he visited, he was from Nigeria, right? He visited the States and he stays at a certain place. And he says, every time I go there, there's, there's, there's a girl. And this is an elderly man and he's a very religious, responsible person, dignitary. 
He says, whenever I go there, there's a girl and she's very polite and we get talking and discussing religion and faith and so on, whatever, whatever. And what happened is, she, at one of his visits, she said, guess what, I'm a Muslim. She had declared a shahada. What had lit it? The guy. This dignitary who kept coming, he lit the flame of asking, finding out, and she was so convinced with Islam, she's this girl, American, and she decided, I'm becoming a Muslim. When this guy came and visited one of the times, she says, I'm a Muslim. And part of her struggles were Salah. Because she's in an environment where she has no place to pray. So she decided what she did, like I say, make the most of whatever your circumstances are, do your best. In her break, she would go under the flight of stairs in a dark corner and quickly dress and, and pray as quickly as she can and come out and back at the reception where she works. Every time she prayed, she hoped and, and prayed that no one saw her because it would be trouble. Anyway, this guy came back a third time and she says, guess what? Something amazing happened. What happened? She says, one day my boss actually came at that time when I was praying and I was saying to Allah, I forgot what I was trying to read in Salah, and I saying, oh Allah, help me so he can't see me. He doesn't see me. He doesn't see me. You know, protect me from him in whatever way you can because she'd lose a job, right? And to her surprise, the boss, after the girl finishes, says, what were you doing? I was praying, I want to see you in my office. Oh, come on. You can imagine what happened. Her heart sank, everything, whatever. Wallahi, she went to the office. And she sat down quietly. He says, what were you doing there? He says, I was praying. He says, what are you praying for? She says, you know, I, I'm now a Muslim. And so... We pray five times a day and I was doing my prayers and so on. The boss said, I'm a Muslim too. From today on, you don't pray in that corner. You come to my office and you pray here. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And this is a true story. And when I heard this, you know, like my hair, like stood on end. And I'm thinking to myself, imagine how Allah saved her. But that doesn't happen with everyone. Some people have lost their jobs because of whatever. So what you could do is do the best given your circumstances with the, the, the alcohol and so on. People would know that you're non-alcoholic. Non I know of a lot of non-Muslims who are non-alcoholic. They don't drink alcohol. And, and the interactions would be less. The food, for example, if, you're, if you have to go to a place where there, the food is not halal, you can opt for something that you would definitely not be. Uh, you know, contaminated in that way, inshallah, slowly but surely, and ask Allah to alleviate that for you. Ask Allah to grant you an alternative. Keep praying to Him every day. Six months will pass, a year will pass, something will happen that will be a miracle, and Allah will give you that opening by His will and His mercy, by the will of Allah. Again, these are the real struggles of people who want to practice, not just reverts. Anyone who wants to practice, they, and they tell you, you know what? I became practicing and I really have a major problem because of so and so and so and so and this. I know of a sister who told me, I wear my hijab but I just have to make it into a bit of a fashion statement so that it looks like um, it's not actually the hijab. What's your comment? I said, I have no comment. You know what's right and wrong. Your circumstances, I don't know them. And if you're doing the best according to you and inshallah, you're going to do better and better and better. I pray that inshallah it will get to the ideal. Everyone knows this is not ideal. I mean, hijab is not worn for fashion, but it's worn in a decent way. It should look nice. It should look, you know, something that's presentable, something that's, uh, that doesn't make you feel inferior or something. No, you're, you're just a, a lovely human being who's trying to practice their faith by the will of Allah. May Allah make it easy for you, my sister. I hope these few words can help you. And I wish I had a job better than the one you're in right now that I could say, sister, from tomorrow, come and work for us. But unfortunately, I don't. May Allah bless you.